Hello guys, um, here we are in another video today. So um, today we're going to be talking about how to write an activity description for your AMCAS application when applying to medical schools in the United States after completing your undergraduate program. Um, so just to kind of introduce what this means for those people that are not as familiar with the AMCAS application. So a big component of applying to medical school is being able to describe your extracurricular experiences, like the things that you did outside of class during college that allowed you to make a decision to pursue a career in medicine, that allowed you to kind of get patient exposure, get clinical exposure, and kind of um, the things that make you who you are as an applicant, right, beyond your academic performance in terms of GPA and MCAT. So. In the AMCAS application, there's a few components that I'm just going to go through real quick. So one of the big, the big components is obviously like introducing all of your classes and classifying them and then giving your overall GPA throughout your undergrad. So that's a big component and can, that kind of demonstrates your academic competency. The MCAT exam, um, which tests your knowledge in biochemistry, biology, physics, math, um, psychology, sociology and also reading comprehension is also another way to show academic competency and also to show that you're able to kind of study and prepare for these big standardized exams that you not only present um, in the form of the MCAT during the undergrad, but you also present them in medical school in terms of the step exams, the big step one, step two, step three exams. And I guess also board examinations when you're in residency. Mm, so that's another way to demonstrate academic competency. So that's GPA, MCAT, and um, those are the big components for academic competency. Now, to show who you are and tell your story as an applicant, that mostly comes in the form of your activity descriptions, aka your extracurricular activities, or your um, personal statement, which tells why you're going into medicine, right? I could make another video about the personal statement, but this video is specifically about the AMCAS activity descriptions. So in that application system, you have 15 slots that you can fill out with uh, each of your activities. So each of those 15 slots can be filled out by, an, by individual activity. There could be a category for awards, a category for shadowing. Um, you could divide up the shadowing experiences in different ways. Um, tell about your research experiences, um, tutoring experiences, um, TA experiences, all of that can go on there, right? So the one that I'm gonna show you today is the way I wrote about my research experience, or at least one of them that um, I was able to put on my application. And um, let's just run, jump right into it. So now um, we're gonna start going through this, the way I wrote about this um, specific activity. So let's kind of go through the things that the AMCAS application asks of you. So it's asking for the experience type. And when you're filling that specific part out, um, it's gonna be a drop down menu. So since this activity was research, one of the things that's in the drop down menu is research slash lab, right? Which is right there. And then another thing that it asks for is the experience name, right? So for that, that's kind of up to you. What's the best name you could give this activity that kind of describes what it is uh, to a certain extent. So for example, I was like the lead undergraduate student researcher at this, this lab. Um, and then I just added this like little thing in parentheses here to specify that it was in nephrology in the area of nephrology with an internal medicine. Then the other thing that it asks for is contact name and title. So here, what you're going to want to put is the person that would be able to validate the number of hours that you put in. So for example, I put in my PI because um, him and I were able to like kind of keep track of the hours that I was putting in the lab. So if medical schools were to contact him, he would be able to validate the hours that I put on this application. So I was able to put this number, um, 1,500 hours for this time period right here from January 2019 when I joined the lab for the first time all the way until May 2021. Um, and then I just kind of, the way I came up with this number was mostly talking to that person, talking to this contact person right here. They're like reminding me of the number of hours I was working per week and then being able to agree on a total number of hours that I worked over this period right here, right? The January 2019 to May 2021. And then I also chose this as a most meaningful experience. Now, what does that mean? Out of the 15 descriptions that you can put in your activity descriptions, you can choose three as your most meaningful. And then what happens is that after you choose those three, you get an extra space 
um, to write about this experience and kind of show or tell why this was uh, one of your most meaningful experiences, right? So from again, I put my PI here for my contact name and title. Contact email that person's email as well, the PI's email in this case. Organization name, well, since the lab was associated with the Emory School of Medicine, um, I just I kind of added that. I called it the Hoover Lab because that's the way kind of it went by. And then in parentheses, like what division, what university it belongs to, right? Then the city, state, country experience, obviously this was within Emory University, so in Atlanta, Georgia, in the United States, so that's why I put that there. And then let's get into the actual meat of this, right? But again, just to remind you, the hours are essentially like the, the best way to come up with those hours is to first check with that contact person and make sure that you both are in agreement that if that medical decides to contact that person to validate your hours, they can kind of uh, validate them for you and confirm that you in fact put in that number of hours. Now, let's continue talking about these activity descriptions. So now to write about it, the key to actually like write about the experience is to try to not sell yourself. So completely avoid trying to say you're empathetic, you're respectful, you're disciplined. You don't want to try to sound like a sales pitch about yourself. You're not trying to sell yourself. You're just trying to tell your story. A lot of things I'm saying might be redundant to things that Dr. Gray from Med School HQ says, but I strongly think he's absolutely right about that. So I'm just kind of giving him credit for these ideas, but I also believe in them and this is kind of how I interpret them. So do not try to sell yourself and just try to tell your story in the best way possible. And then let the story kind of tell who you are and how this experience shaped you. So I'm just going to go ahead and read it and kind of point a few things here and there. So it says, I joined this nephrology research team early in my college career, and through this experience, I have learned about the molecular underpinnings of human physiology. So in that first sentence, I didn't say anything of like, oh, I'm super passionate about science or anything like that. I just said that this experience allowed me to learn. Simple, right? The idea that all macro events are facilitated by a plethora of complex molecular ones fascinates me. Okay, maybe a little sales pitchy where I'm kind of saying... I like science, but I'm not directly saying that, right? I'm just implying that I like learning about the molecular details and how those molecular details kind of facilitate the macro ones. This research experience has allowed me to delve into investigating the mechanisms behind salt-sensitive hypertension. Okay, a little introduction, introductory sentence. It's just about like a topic that I studied in research. So salt-sensitive hypertension. Early on, I was inspired by a conversation with my PI that gave me a lot of relevance to the research. That gave a lot of relevance to the research. Dr. Hoover taught me about, so that, that past sentence also like kind of a cliffhanger sentence where I said I had a conversation that inspired me about research, but I didn't mention exactly what it was. So it kind of gets the reader in a mood to kind of read more, right? Dr. Hoover taught me about the origin of many of his research ideas, his patients. Right? I found this connection between research and clinical work unique and felt motivated to continue in this field of research. So again, I literally, I'm just telling him a story about this conversation I had with my PI. I didn't get into the nitty gritty details of the conversation itself, but what's the main takeaway from that conversation? That I learned that in medicine, you can really connect what you're seeing with your patients and use that inspiration and those problems to try to fix them through research or to try to find potential solutions, um, maybe for those patients in the short term or maybe for other patients presenting in similar ways in the future. So it was just like a very enlightening conversation for me. But again, I'm not being sales pitchy. I'm not trying to sell myself. I'm just telling the story of what research did to me and what this conversation did. Now that's the first part and that's about as much space that you get for the portion that is available for every activity description. But then this opens up this most meaningful remarks experience opens up for when you mark it as a most meaningful experience. And then as you can see, it's slightly longer. I don't know the exact characters, but I can just put them um, somewhere here on the screen. So this one is, research has also been very important to me because of the relevance it has, because of the personal relevance it has. Now, um, a kind of introductory about why it's most meaningful, because it's personally relevant to me, right? Hypertension is a chronic condition that is highly prevalent in my family. True. I mean, I'm just introductory. Um, not too long ago, after hearing my mom's blood pressure was monitored for 24 hours, 
she was diagnosed as hypertensive with a non-dipping pattern. So again, kind of introduc- introducing this issue, this uh, health issue in my family. And then thanks to modern medicine, my mother's blood pressure can be pharmacologically controlled, right? So I'm just saying that like biomedical breakthroughs have allowed my mother to be controlled in terms of the like her blood pressure. So I'm just saying that, that that is important to me and that's kind of astonishing that we can do that nowadays, right? However, the molecular mechanisms underlying the pathology are yet to be known. Yeah, hypertension is like the mechanisms behind it are not exactly um, understood. Coincidentally, my research team happened to be working on a new project attempting to link a peptide hormone growth factor with the failed dipping of blood pressure at night that my mother has. Again, maybe a little technical there with the language with the peptide hormone. I just didn't want to specifically mention it. Right, obviously it was a epidermal growth factor, but I didn't want to get into it specifically. I just wanted to kind of generally introduce it and generally introduce why this research is relevant to me because of that family connection. This made me eager to learn more about the condition and sparked a lot of relevance into my investigative work. I was able to experience through my mom the clinical presentations of molecular events I was studying in lab. This experience was exactly what Dr. Hoover was talking to me about And only then did I really understand what he meant by where his research ideas and inspirations came from. As a future physician, I hope to work alongside a research team who cherishes this philosophy of doing research that is motivated by the clinical presentations of patients. So again, I kind of talked about this story, not trying to sell myself, and at the end I had like a final takeaway, this last sentence of as a future physician, right? So that was my big takeaway. So I feel like that's a good structure for some of these um, activity descriptions where you kind of tell a story and kind of have some reflection interspersed within the story itself and at the end always try to have like that concluding sentence. But again, what I really want to emphasize is at no point in this um, activity description am I trying to sell myself as like, oh my God, I'm so smart, I'm an empathetic person, like I can't wait to have all of these breakthroughs in science and like... Um, you know, just not trying to sell yourself like that because you want to allow your story to tell, um, to show through with those passions. Um, and that's just kind of like my takeaway on how to write these activity descriptions. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Um, it's going to be like, I can think 12 minutes or so. So, um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was helpful and let me know what else you'd like to see. Um, and I hope everything is going well for those applying this cycle and, um, I'll see you in the next video.